I'm just going to start off um, with a little bit of context about the airport, about London Luton Airport, and why we've got a pretty unique perspective on, on what's going on in the market around us. And then run through what our stakeholders are telling us, and then run through what we are seeing and what we are telling our shareholders about what's coming down the line on Brexit. Our airport charges are 80% cheaper than Heathrow, we are 50% cheaper than Gatwick, and we're in the middle, as some of you might have found out during the summer, of a £150 million expansion programme. We're doubling our capacity, we're the only airport in the southeast to be adding any significant capacity. So we've been a huge success story um, in terms of growth, in terms of progression, in terms of bringing in new airlines and developing new routes and new destinations. We currently have, as of this week, 123 different destinations. An airport is a mini city. Anything that happens in a city happens in an airport. Airports, as you all know, you all feel you have a stake in your airport. You've got the control authorities in addition to the protest groups. You've got central government, local government, European Union, tenants, concessionaires, airlines, they all <coughs> feel they have a stake. And funnily enough, none of them are shy in telling us their opinions. They tell us all the time. Our shareholders, interestingly, are European shareholders. They are a mixture of Spanish and French. They are public and private sector shareholders. Any significant long-term infrastructure or other investment program that you do is always uncertain and always has been uncertain. There is no such thing as certainty as long-term investment plans. And actually, what you're talking about is a different type of uncertainty now, but there always was and there always will be uncertainty. What is Brexit going to do for our business plan? Now, we've summarised it for our board in 13 different points. But the very simple summary is there are no red down arrows. In fact, there's one red down arrows, and it's the pension deficit. It's the impact of the drop in the, in the yield curve on the pension deficit. But everything else is either an amber, yellow, or slightly down arrow, or a green, up, or slightly up arrow. There are, for our business, a number of factors which actually have benefits. The obvious one, if you think about it, is we're outside the EU, we may end up with much higher duty-free sales percentages, as an example. Well, looking forward to that. <laughs> There's so much demand in the market in London and the South East, certainly, that actually even a drop-off in growth, because there's, there's insufficient supply in our business, actually a drop-off in GDP will make no tangible difference. Open skies, I think, is the one thing that the EU has an interest to maintain. Open skies is the free flying of aircraft and free landing rights within European airports. We don't see the EU cutting off open skies. That's the biggest single point in our business. Uh, all the European safety regulations, well, frankly, they're pretty good. We think that the UK regulators are going to adopt them anyway. It's the same framework. Investor sentiment is slightly softer, but they are still talking, and investment is always risky. Interest rates have impacted pension deficits, but it comes with an upside in terms of my refinancing, which I'm just about to launch, I think, in a few weeks' time. That will be bring benefits in terms of my interest costs. It will also bring costs in terms of my pension deficit. Tax is, interest. I'm, I, is interesting. I may see an improvement in my duty-free sales. From the pronouncement, certainly from George Osborne before he uh, went, um, there was a suspicion and there was a suggestion of lower corporate tax rates, I think, which may help my business. Wages, wage pressure, I think, will be, um, there'll be pressures both up and down. On the one hand, the cost of living may increase. On the other hand, worker sentiment about the security of their jobs may help to suppress and offset the increasing cost of living. Exchange rate is an impact. Undoubtedly, my shareholders are getting less return in euro than they have from a sterling, what is in my business, is fundamentally a sterling business. My airlines pay me in sterling fundamentally. Um, but on the, on the flip side, the airlines will have lower landing charges as my landing charges are in sterling. My European airlines will have lower landing charges. So all in all, our message to our shareholders was, look, probably, probably, there's more potential downside to our business, which depends fundamentally on the free movement of people uh, around Europe, than there is upside. But we have positives and upsides and benefits that some other businesses don't have, and we have upsides and benefits that some other businesses do have. There are offsetting mitigations against some of the downsides. But fundamentally, our message 
um, it can be summarised as Douglas Adams said to our shareholders, which is don't panic. It's simply too early to tell. We're not seeing anything tangible. We don't know what's happening. We don't know what's coming around the corner. And our message to our shareholders is stop panicking. Business as usual. When we know something, we will get a plan and react to it. But until then, we're not proposing to do much more. I just wondered, because I think everybody was expecting the result to be remain. I'm sure that everybody was in shock. Did you already have a plan B ready at Luton Airport? Did you consider what would happen if it was to leave? I think our view is, as I explained this evening, yes. don't panic. There is... Uh, we don't have any information, we simply don't have enough information to know what the result is going to be um, of the Brexit vote, let alone the result was going to be before the vote on the 23rd of June. So we hadn't come up with a plan B, we still are not spending much energy on coming up with a plan B because at the moment we don't know. Our energy is on improving our business, improving the passenger experience, um, not worrying about plan Bs of a, num a large number of potential scenarios that could happen over the next two to three years. So we're not focusing a lot of time on plan B, we're focusing our energy and time on improving the airport. Okay, because how much is being invested in the Airport, it's a massive sum. So we're now we're now currently investing um, around about 130 million pounds. We are improving all of our uh, subsystems. We're improving the road network. We're, we're building more stands. We are improving the terminal, um, and we are right in the middle of it. Um, by the end of this year, the road network will be improved uh, and finished, and we are going to complete the terminal works towards the end of next year. There has been talk of a train from uh, Luton Airport Station. That, that's a completely different investment. So that's, that's uh, we're working with uh, Luton Borough Council and their airport investment arm, which is London Luton Airport Limited. It is their project. They are uh, very keen, as we are, to see the investment in the mass passenger transit system from Luton Airport Parkway to the airport. That is, um, I think they are proceeding at a pace with that plans and we are working very closely with them to help facilitate it. Okay. Final question. I, I think soon after Brexit was announced and, and uh, there was a lot of talk about EasyJet being really nervous and EasyJet moving their HQ. Because EasyJet plays such a big part in London Luton Airport, you must have had conversations with them given that their HQ is at London Luton Airport. I think I'll let Carolyn McCall talk yeah. about EasyJet's future She's as opposed amazing. to me yeah. uh, talking amazing. about it. Uh, all I would say is EasyJet uh, have been growing over the past few years. They continue to grow at, at Luton. They are our biggest customer. We value the relationship hugely. Um, and um, they are a very successful airline who are continuing to grow and work with us. And also they get such massive traffic. It's not as if they could, they'll still be flying. I, I think that the all of the airlines, uh, we've got a, we've got some very big carriers who operate at Luton. They are all growing. They are all very good and well-run businesses. Um, and they will be looking at all the ups and downs that they have in their businesses as well and working through them. But we've, we've grown 16.9% last year. It, it, we are a, a success story and our airlines are a success story. I think so. And also, fine, one more finally. Um, you, you also have a big, uh, it looks like you have a big business in private jets as well. That's also growing. So, so we are one of the key European bases for uh, general aviation. Uh, Luton is a very popular destination. Our transport links into London, into central London are very good. Um, and we're working with our fixed based operators who handle those aircraft. Um, it brings to, to the town as well skilled labour benefits, so it brings a lot of maintenance facilities in terms of for general aviation. So we work with them all. We value all of our streams of activity. General aviation, though, is one very important to us. Okay. Thank you.